Welcome to my craft room. Hope everyone's had a great week and got some progress done on whatever it is they're working on. I feel very accomplished this week. When I'm... We've got a storm coming in. A lot of thunder. I have... Before I sat down here to film this video, I felt very, very productive. But when I start pulling things out, I always feel like, I don't have enough. I don't think I've done enough this week. But let me tell you, I feel very productive. I finished Robbie's socks. I finished all the squares for the mystery quilt. We're just waiting on instructions for putting them all together. I've gotten good progress done to the baby blanket. I weeded the garden this morning. Now it never seems like a lot, but if you know how much time it goes into all of these things, then you know I have I've accomplished something this week. Doing things a little bit different this week, I'm always trying to figure out exactly what's going to work for me. Today, with it being a bit overcast and stormy, I went ahead and tried natural light, but I feel like I'm dark on this side and light on this side, so I'm not sure if this lighting is going to work, but for this week, it is what it is. I've also decided instead of popping up pictures, I'm going to try filming short little videos because sometimes the pictures don't quite show the product very well, the project very well. So the first video you're going to see is of Robbie Socks. So I finished Robbie Socks. Let me tell you, Saturday night, I knew that if I stayed up just a little bit later that I was going to be able to finish these socks. All I really had left is part of the leg and the cuff on one sock, so it was very exciting because I know I'm just going to put on another, uh, cast on another sock, pair of socks, and it's going to be knit exactly the same, but to have this pair done is always thrilling to me. Now I went ahead and I made a little, um, a little hack of a sock blocker. This is foam core board with shelving paper from the Dollar Tree to keep it slick. I just went ahead and I laid the sock out, traced around it, cut it all out, covered it, and there you go, Bob's your uncle, right? Now, I went with my normal, the stitch count and everything is what I usually use, and I, and I went back and I did this heel that I found in the toe up waffle stitch sock pattern. And I made it a few times and it's a really great heel to stitch but then I tried my socks on today that I made the same heel with and I'm not too sure about how I feel about it it just it's a gusset which allows the width to get over the widest part of your foot so you have a lot of increases but then there's no heel flap so it really kind of feels funny on my heel so even though I can do this one in my sleep without looking I've got it memorized I'm probably gonna go back to the heel flap and gusset where you have to pick up stitches and it'll also allow me to use a contrast color on the heel because when you do a heel flap and gusset you only work the heel stitches but with this pattern you're still working the entire sock all the way around and this is what it looks like when it's not on a blocker I come to find that I really prefer the self striping yarn a lot of knitters will tell you that not only does a self-striping yarn look really nice because it looks like you've worked hard making all these different color stripes, but it's a really great motivator because if you're doing a yellow stripe, you want to keep knitting until that stripe is gone so you can see the next color. And when that blue stripe's gone, you want to keep going until you see that green stripe. And it really helps you knit your socks faster. And the only other problem I have with this, this is a hand dyed yarn, but the white stitches aren't bad here, but a lot of it when it's coming in back into the darker blue, it's dirty looking. You see how they have this, this, this yellow tinge to it? To be honest with you, I'm kind of glad I made these socks for Robbie because I'm not too thrilled with the color. So next up is to dig through the stash and find another colorway that, depending on what I pull out, whether I make socks for me or for him. Now every time I finish a pair of socks, I always say, that's it, I'm not making any more socks. 
But a couple days later, I always cast on a new pair because there's just something about the socks that it's a very relaxing and meditative knit. I feel like I have a little weird thing going on with the hair today. So I still have a bit of a stash left for sock yarn. I don't have to buy any new stuff yet. So I'll probably cast on another pair. The question becomes whether I cast it on for me or for him. Now, as I said, I got all my squares put together. Well, not put together, but I got all the small pieces of each square put together. I believe they're nine and a half inch blocks for the mystery quilt. Here's a video. So here is one set of my blocks from the mystery quilt with my little helper, Miss Mocha. For some reason, whenever I turn on the camera, she has got to be in the video. Now I'm not sure how the layout's gonna be and I'm pretty sure 100% that we are not going to be laying them all out like this because I'm gonna show you the other set. This is the second set of blocks we made with my helper. I really like the way the aqua and the orange work on this one with the white. The scrappy, I guess the centers, it was, when they showed us the block, it was more of an exploding block where it looked like it was exploding out. You lose that a little bit with the scrappy, but I still think it looks pretty good. Now some of the people that are quilting along with me, they have chosen some really fun fabrics and their quilts are going to look pretty good. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how their tops come together. A couple other people chose a lot of neutrals and their fabric is just muddying together and they're not very pleased. I figure going totally scrappy whatever it's it scrappy always works for me i just love scrappy so i think this quilt top is going to look pretty good and the next up is the baby blanket i've been working on i put a little bit of time into my feather and fan baby blanket after knitting with size one needles and sock yarn it's really nice to move off to size seven needles and even though this is a sport weight it's still going a lot faster i got about seven inches into it now after i block it these scallops should go ahead and lay flat because they have every other time I've done it, so that'll be nice. For this one, I am using the Snuggly Wuggly Big in the colorway Baby Pastel. I only have the one ball of this, and I'd started knitting hat with it and then decided I didn't want to. So I have a few pieces. I really have a feeling I'm going to have to buy another ball of this before it's done, though. We'll see. I really enjoy this type of blanket, and this will be a good blanket for either the shop or for the uh, hope chest for the eventual grandchildren. So it'll be worth putting another ball into it, even though I am trying to just use up stash that's in the house. I don't like to stop in the middle of a row when working on a blanket. I try to always make it all the way across. So sometimes I only work on it when I have time to sit down. I didn't film anything separate for this because, you know, they're just dishcloths. While uh, I have a few minutes here or there, I like to just go ahead and knit a dishcloth. Nothing fancy, just the uh, sugar and cream cotton. I have a dark navy and a white, just using up, using up the stash. Like I said, my goal for this year is to try to empty the craft room. I want to have I want to be forced to have to go shopping and buy stuff for a project. Hey, these are half square triangles. Yeah, so that's what my plan is. I want to be mindful in my purchases. I don't want to just buy a fabric because it's fun and cute and I love it or it's on sale. I want to know that I'm going to be putting it into a project. I don't mind having a small stash, but my goal for my main stash, not counting any leftovers, scraps, pre-cuts, or things like that, backings, is to make sure I have less than a Rubbermaid tubs full of stash. I have a uh, one of those cheap Walmart bookshelves. It's got like five, six shelves on it, and I don't want that to ever become full. I like to have um, solids and blenders fabrics and stuff like that, but I want to, I want that thrill of going shopping every time I want to start a new project. When I want to start a quilt, I want to be able to go to the quilt store or even Joann's, I don't mind going there, 
or shopping online and seeing touching or ordering fabric. I want to know that I want the whole process for every quilt. But I also want to keep enough in the house for emergency quilts. Someone needs something for a birthday, I've got the fabric for it. I can just whip it out real quick, something little, whether it's tote bags or something like that, or small simple quilts, I can do it in a couple days. That is my plan. Same thing with yarn. I don't want to have too much yarn in the house. It's really easy just to run up to the store because I have I have a Joann's and a Michael's less than five miles from my house. I have an AC Moore and a Hobby Lobby. While it might take 40 minutes to get there, but it's only 10 minutes away from my house. So there's real no need to have lots and lots of stuff just sitting in the house. I feel if my stash is too big for me, it bothers me. It's like, I feel like it's wasted money. But that's just for me. Alright, so now next week's plans are as follows. So for the next week before I see you again, I will put more work onto the baby blanket. Hopefully I will be piecing... We should get the next clue, like I said in the video, on Thursday for the mystery quilt. So hopefully I will be piecing that next weekend. Oh, I have another finish. Check this out. I'm just going to put a couple pictures because I don't have a video of it. I finished the horse quilt. I had the top pieced. I had to have it quilted and then I bound it and it's all done. It's just a baby size so it's pretty simple. But the quilt top for next week to finish is a Christmas one. Uh, several years back Everyone had gone crazy about doing half square triangle zigzags. I don't know if you guys remember that at all. But I had a lot of Christmas fabric and a lot of white, so I went ahead and made this. I don't have the measurements right now. But whenever I... I used to have a giant roll of the batting, those big, you know, the $400 ones, the 40, 70, 90 yards, whatever they are. I used to have one of those big rolls of batting, and so every time I made a top, I cut out the batting for it. So I have the batting all set. I just need to make the batting, get it quilted. I'm thinking I'm just going to echo quilt the zigzags, and I'll have a Christmas throw or baby quilt. So new socks, quilt the Christmas zigzag, work on the baby quilt. Oh cast on a new dishcloth, a uh, new washcloth, because I always have those on needles. I think that about does it for me. So I'm looking forward to seeing everyone's videos, and we'll see you next week. Bye!